I would say 90% of those followers come from within the Twitter community, within the NFT community on Twitter, within spaces by tweeting and engaging with the community. I did not gain 10K Twitter followers by going on Instagram and telling my 140K followers to come to Twitter. That didn't work. I mean, it works. It works all right. Maybe I'll get, you know, four or five people that come over if I post about it. But the way that I've gained thousands of followers on Twitter has been 100% from engaging in the Twitter community. And I would say 99% of my collectors or something, maybe even 100% of my collectors come from Twitter. That's right. Almost none of them are coming from the Instagram with 140K or my Spotify with a million monthly listeners. It's not those people because the people who do want NFTs, what do they do? They tap in on Twitter, right? Because that's just kind of how it works. If you're if you're deep enough to collect NFTs, you pretty much understand that Twitter is the home base for NFTs. Metaverse, a Web3 and NFT podcast. Good morning, Metaverse. Thanks for tuning in to the GM Metaverse podcast powered by Mint Songs. My name is Josh Gordon, and I'm the host. I'm so thankful to be able to come back week after week and interview so many inspiring artists and creators and entrepreneurs in the Web3 space. Today, we've got a great episode with Dill, an artist who has a career that spans from the traditional music industry world. And he really dives into how he's leveraged Web3 and NFTs and crypto to, to brand himself for years to come. And he's got a lot of really practical advice for artists and interesting stories. And what really struck out to me most is the long-term vision he brings to the table here and how he thinks about this music career, not just for a specific drop or for you know the week, but for years to come. Now, before we jump into that, we've got a quick tip. And today's is around Twitter spaces. We've mentioned Twitter before on like making sure you're following the right people. But today is find Twitter spaces that are really catered to your, your niche, the area of interest that you want to grow in, specifically around music. There's some great music Twitter spaces going on right now. We mentioned them in the episode. But every Friday, Mint Songs has a Twitter space at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. And in these, we can walk through you know, different artists, maybe you if you raise your hand and come on up to the stage and ask some questions to help artists strategize, create, and build their Web3 communities. So if that sounds of interest to you, if getting some you know, really personalized advice and feedback on, you know, your strategy in the Web3 and NFT world would be helpful. Jump on into the Mint Songs Twitter space and let's get talking. So with that said, let's hop on over and have this interview with Dill. Good morning, Metaverse. Thanks everybody for tuning in today. We've got an amazing guest Dill, he's joining us from Philly. We got a lot to cover around his music NFT project and the really the future he sees for Web3 and uh, music NFTs. So Dill, how you doing today? I appreciate you joining. What up, Josh? How's it going? GM, GM. Happy to be here and happy to talk about music NFTs. I've been uh, getting up every GM and I'm degening these music NFTs all day, every day. So there's a lot of exciting stuff going on even in the past couple of weeks. Yeah, I seen you really like pushing pushing a lot of stuff online, um, like from your Twitter, you're super active there and like your Discord community. What's been like, what's been the biggest thing you've been focused on as of late? Well, lately I would say the music NFT space is exploding. And what we're seeing is a lot of confusion and I think people need help onboarding. So I've really been focused about onboarding people to the space lately. And that's been a big piece of my focus. And so other than that, I would say the trading cards, which launched 38 days ago, I believe. So just over a month ago, those are a big focus of mine as well. Uh, But overall, I think the the biggest thing that we're seeing in the past month or so is an explosion in the music music NFT space uh, from the collector side and the artist side. Yeah. Well, okay. We're definitely going to jump into like how you like your views on onboarding artists and also your projects soon. So, um, We'll get to that in a minute. I think I'd like to start off with having you provide us a background on how you got into crypto in the first place and really like the series of events that led to you, you know, being an artist in, in the NFT space today. 
Yeah. So originally I got into music really as a kid in high school. Um, I did some musical things. Uh, I was in some shows. I did choir when I was younger. Um, and then in high school, me and my buddy Wes Walker ran a DJ business where we would just do uh, little parties and school dances and stuff. And so we were always kind of hustling and trying to make something happen in the music space, but really lost a lot of that interest until reconnecting with it. Um, probably my freshman year of college, I would say. And me and Wes would always uh, mess around. There's a video of us in seventh grade where I'm beatboxing and uh, he's rapping out on the playground. But in our freshman year of college, we made the song Jordan Belfort. And so this was inspired by the movie Wolf of Wall Street, which I saw and, and immediately, you know, I love the movie. I knew it was going to be a legendary film. So I had this idea to make a song about it. And I was kind of thinking like along the lines of Rick Ross or something, shouting out like, think I'm Big Meech, Larry Hoover. And I was like, all right, I'm going to shout this guy Jordan Belfort out. So that's where the Jordan Belfort song came from. We put it out on SoundCloud and it exploded. Uh, we had a very organic viral growth on SoundCloud and then Spotify and YouTube. Uh, currently, the song is platinum. It has over 40 million on YouTube, over 250 million streams total. And so a part of that story, without getting too deep, is that the record label got in early on our master. And we ended up, we were young, 18, 19 at the time. And I would say we got sold a dream by the record label, who then took ownership of our masters and gave us a very small cut. So they gave us an advance payment, which most people don't know is really just a loan that you have to pay back. And so the record label gives you money up front that's nice and flashy, but you have to pay it all back with your royalties. And so we got in this situation where our big hit song that's now, it became the top college song. Uh, it should be double platinum now. We have to get it audited. But a lot of things have happened with that record, but the record label got most of the benefit from that. And so I learned pretty quickly by being in the industry and getting thrown into things that ownership is so important with music and so this whole experience was great for me i got my foot in the door but i also could have made a lot more money if i would have owned the jordan belfort song and so this was one of the first independent singles to blow up on soundcloud so i really got to look into like soundcloud spotify youtube all the algorithms i mean these things formed while jordan belfort song was blowing up uh, so i really learned about that I've learned a lot about marketing, digital promotion, and how to build my brand in the music industry. And for the last five to 10 years, I've applied that to all my work. Um, Jordan Belfort was really the beginning for me, but I had a great hit with that. Um, you know, it was unexpected. We just put it out there on SoundCloud and we went from being two kids recording on a laptop with a blue Yeti microphone, literally one of the most low quality beginner mics. And next thing you know, we're out in LA at the, you know, a studio, the nicest studio out there. And so it was like a, a, a whirlwind experience, but I learned so much. And that's what brought me down this independent path that I arrived at to do my current albums and some of my singles. Um, so basically what happened is after touring and performing, and then I actually went back to college to finish my degree uh, because I had, I had finished college halfway in New Orleans. And so I wanted to finish off my last two years and keep my scholarship. So after touring for a year, which I had taken off from college, went back, finished my degree. And at this time, I kind of, I almost lost interest in music. I wouldn't say I lost interest. It's that I wasn't making music for a couple of years. And I was totally focused on crypto and building my business advantage blockchain, which is a crypto business here in Philly. We're a consultancy. We have a hedge fund now. So we've done a lot with that business over the past four or five years. And in the beginning of starting that company, I wasn't making music and I almost thought I was going to go into crypto full time and perhaps not even be in music anymore. I mean, I had a great run. I had a great hit song. I have I had a good platform, too. Right. But part of me was like, OK, maybe I need to move on. Um, and so after some time in crypto, I realized that I just don't have the same passion for crypto that I have for music. I mean, I love crypto. I think it's cool. I think it's fun and I think it's exciting in a lot of ways, but it doesn't have that connection, that heart and soul that I really feel invested in with music where I just love being in the studio. I love the creative process, all that stuff. Uh, so in 2018, 2019, I had this idea where I was like, OK, I learned all this stuff about crypto. I have this huge platform, you know, I had half a million to a million monthly listeners. 
And I was like, I really want to show my audience what I've learned about the future of financial freedom and creative freedom through crypto, through NFTs. And so I came up with this idea for a crypto rap album. And when Crypto Rich came out in 2019, it was the first crypto album out there. Um, so it's it's done really well since 2019. I released a deluxe edition with 10 new songs. And currently it's the top crypto title with 2 million streams on Spotify and a lot of us, uh, popular videos on YouTube and other sites as well. So the album has been growing a lot lately. But uh, recently, there's been an explosion in the music NFT space, which has just really brought everything together, I would say. And so now I'm seeing some momentum on my collection. And in terms of crypto music and NFTs for music, uh, we're seeing a lot of forward momentum. And I know you guys understand that at Mint Songs as well. Yeah. Wow. Uh, what, what a journey there. I mean, I from, you know making music with your friend just for fun, like as a kid, all the way through being able to like tour the U S like, I think that's a hell of an experience. And, um, I a hundred percent party to that song too. Like I was in college yeah. in that time frame. I remember it coming on my Spotify discover weekly, like just as those kind of like recommendation algor algorithms, like you were mentioning, were really taken off and people realized we could get like recommend recommended music based on, you know, our interests and whatnot. Um, Sure. So it's kind of, it's, it's cool to have that experience myself and remember listening to that song and hear your side of the story for that too. Um, yeah, man. I think that with, with a great song and with great music in general, especially when it's connected to some kind of external story, right? Like the Jordan Belfort song, it's more than just the song being good. It's also connected to this external story, Wolf of Wall Street and the Jordan Belfort guy right he's a real dude so there's all these things that it connects to in the real world and the music is great too you know of course that's important i think the requirement is that the music has to be great and has to be a good song but with that connection to an outside story i think that's really made it a classic and it kind of has this uh unique listener audience almost like a cult following of people who just listen to it every once in a while uh, so the song continues to get like two million streams per month and that song has essentially become a giant funnel that brings people into crypto music and nfts through my crypto rich album right and so i would draw a comparison between the crypto rich album and jordan belfort in that crypto rich is connected to this entire story of crypto bitcoin blockchain ethereum nfts everything that i've created around on this. And I would even say that the vision for Crypto Rich is much bigger than the Jordan Belfort song. I mean, that's kind of novelty. That's kind of niche. I think Crypto Rich is, it has this global appeal. The music is dope. Of course, that's the first requirement. My heart and soul and hours in the studio and years of work are in this album, right? In terms of the music, the music is fire, but the story behind it and the actual connection to crypto and the global potential of crypto I see this as being a much bigger album and a much bigger piece of music than just the Jordan Belfort song. So a lot of people know my music from Jordan Belfort. They've seen that song, they've heard it. And just like that song took four or five years to really go platinum. I mean, I think it, I think this song went platinum in three years and then double platinum in about five years. So it takes a long time for a good story to circulate and for music to grow. And so I see the potential with Crypto Rich to be much bigger than the Jordan Belfort song alone. Uh, so it's just a matter of time until uh, the music really has a chance to circulate because that's the thing. It takes time, effort and consistency. Yeah, I appreciate you like drawing that linkage there. And it was something that I was thinking about is like, is it sounds like this Crypto Rich album is really the foundation for, for your music career next step that you want to continue building on. And just like Jordan Belfer was a funnel to what you're doing now, maybe Crypto Rich will be a funnel to like future crypto projects as, as this album really like takes off. And this isn't, uh, some of these songs aren't brand new, right? I mean, this is this music you dropped back in, uh, not, is it in 2021 or was it earlier? Yeah, 2019 is when the album originally dropped with nine songs.
Then I added 10 new songs at the end of 2020. So we're just coming up on about a year of the full album with 19 songs. So the music isn't new, that's for sure. Some of the songs are multiple years old. Some of them, like, for example, the Bad Hair music video has like almost 200,000 views. It's been out for over a year. The song has 500,000 streams on Spotify. So a lot of the songs and singles and, and uh, different pieces of the album have had time to grow. But that's great. Honestly, I think one of the best positive indicators for an NFT collection is that it's based on popular music. And so in the future with music NFTs, we're going to see the biggest collections are actually popular music across other sites, platforms, uh, YouTube music videos, uh, even going to radio, right, and getting big placements and stuff like that. I think all of these things that happen in the real world, they drive value back to the NFT collection. And so, for example, I was just editing a music video for my No Sleep NFT the other day. And the way I think of it is this music video is an asset for that NFT, right? It continues to bring audience attention and, and essentially represent that song. So when you put out a music video that has an NFT behind it, this is just another marketing asset for that NFT. So in many ways, to connect to what you said, it's like Crypto Rich the album is actually the best funnel for NFT sales and NFT purchases. Because if you want a piece of the future of this music, you see the vision, then you get that NFT, you own a piece, you can share in my success, right? Um, and even to connect it further, it's like, yeah, Crypto Rich is my first album, my only album. All of my albums will be available as NFTs. So when my next album comes out, you get airdropped a piece of that album by holding the Crypto Rich VIP NFT. Now, not all my NFTs are VIP, but my VIP holders, the rare ones, they're going to get all future airdrops. So it's, it's uh, really about understanding the collection because you got to build different features for different NFTs. Yeah. Yeah. You, you touched on a lot of, a lot of things there. I mean, like the, the vision for the music NFT being maybe more than just a, a single piece of content being like a Genesis foundation that you want to build off of. You touched on like utility aspects to it that I, I definitely want to dive into. Um, so I guess we can just jump maybe let's jump right on into the utility piece since that's what you ended on. And then I might want to take a step back and talk a little bit about like the music NFT space from a more macro lens, but what pieces of like, how are you thinking through music, you music NFT utility and from a, a royalty perspective, airdrops, like physical items, you know, we're seeing artists do sometimes all of them and sometimes different pieces of them. But in your mind, when you're thinking through like, which, what like value adds, like how are you making that decision? Yeah, so I actually have a great display on my website that shows all the features. So I don't know if this comes up if I screen share here. Yeah, I can um, add it to the stream, let me pull it up. Awesome, yeah, I just screen shared. But yeah, we can run down these features, right? So. I would say the basic feature is music download. Of course, when you buy the NFT, you can download the files. You can use those files how you want. If you want to use them in a video or uh, make a dance video or you want to use them on your podcast, different things like that, I'm totally open to it. You just have to contact me because I want to make sure your video doesn't get taken down from YouTube or something along those lines. So that's music download, right? And all the things that come with a music download. But the key to realize is when you buy the NFT, you probably still want to listen on Spotify. Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. Why? Because you support that artist with the streaming royalties and then the music has a better chance of going viral. So when you own the NFT, you're going to want to influence the algorithm and influence the actual listening and, and playing on the other platforms, right? So there's a lot more behind a music NFT than just using the NFT to download the music. And so this is where we really connect it. It's like you've got your lifetime ticket here. So the VIP NFT is a lifetime ticket to all of my shows. Shows, which is very exciting. Um, you know, you can come to all of my shows for free with this and there's different features that I'm building in as well. So right now it's actually like, you'll just contact me and get added to my guest list or my VIP list, depending on the show. And in the future, we'll have like a ticketing platform and everything built out where you can do this all online through your browser using MetaMask or whatever wallet your NFT is in. So that's going to be really cool when we actually integrate web three fully for ticketing. And the yeah. same thing. Can I, can I ask you a question on that? Sure. Like for that, um, 
that ticketing tool, is that something you envision being like a feature that is like Dill exclusive? Or is that something you want to open up to, you know, other artists to be able to connect their fan bases and allow them like token access gated, you know, portals for tickets and experiences? Yeah. So the way I'm doing it now is with a partner, most likely Nifty Lab, and they have an integration where you will essentially connect your wallet, like your MetaMask wallet, and then you'll be able to access my ticketing site. And there's a few different ways we'll do it. But I think the key with NFTs is that they function as a pass, right? It's your VIP pass. And so you might need to use that pass to go on to a regular ticketing site or to go uh, with a ticketing integration that we're using that's new, right? Because different events are going to have different requirements for ticketing. But the the you know the important part is that the nft is your key so you come sign with your wallet and i can give you access to a lot of different things right and that brings me to physical merch so if you look at my merch website um, i've got a lot of cool stuff i've been making merch for a few years a lot of the crypto rich stuff so you're going to be able to get any of this merch you'll get credits with the nft so the nft will give you credits to use on shopify where you can get your free merch shipped to you and of course, NFT airdrops. This is one of the most significant pieces of my NFT. If you hold that crypto rich VIP Genesis NFT, you're going to get stuff airdropped to your wallet for free. The first airdrop was these trading cards. They've done really well. This is the standard trading card. It actually started at zero Ethereum. Uh, this one also started at zero Ethereum, the gold card. And a few lucky collectors got this platinum card, one of 10, which just had a major sale at 0.5 Ethereum. And that's amazing because these started at 0.1. And so what I've been saying since this happened is like in 38 days, we've had a trading card that just sold for $2,200. That is as much as an extremely valuable baseball card or any other valuable collectible card. So it's pretty amazing the, the way that these pieces can build value thanks to NFTs. And yeah. so that's, that's, you know, I think pretty much one of a kind is this trading cards for music. And so I took inspiration from Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh! And I wanted to give people a smaller piece of the album. So that's why I made these trading cards, which don't include VIP. So if you want the VIP, you're going to have to get one of these Crypto Rich Deluxe or one of the other VIP pieces in my set. But if you just want to support and have a piece of the album's future, then you can get the trading cards. And there's a lot more features as well. You've got the vinyl album, which I'm going to do a vinyl run and ship that to everybody. And I also have the first music NFT with a playable game. And it's actually a play to earn game as well. I have given out a bunch of NFTs to people who play this and get a high score in my Discord. So if you see this, you can actually play this game with all my music in it. Oh, look at that. Right there. Um, but this yeah. is the, the first NFT or music NFT it's, game. I'm wow. sorry, Dill. I just want to. A, the game's a little loud covering your uh, audio. My life, my life. It's my life. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Anyway, um, I just want to say that, you know, that's the first music NFT with the playable game. Um, so. Yeah, I'm doing all these different things um, to give you an idea as well about my shows. I also uh, uh, I have this VIP event history, right? You can see here all the events that I've done for VIP holders. Uh, probably need to add a couple more because I just did something at NFT NYC. I've got stuff coming up in uh, Miami for Art Basel. And I'll show you one more thing that sh gives you an idea of what my shows are like. So... I was in Atlantic City uh, last month opening for Waka Flocka and Wu-Tang Clan. So I just posted this recap literally just before we got on this call. I posted this recap of the show where I opened for Wu-Tang Clan and Waka Flocka. So uh, this is playing my song Crypto Rich, and I'll show you uh, the quick rundown of how the show went. Oh, let's get the audio in here. for everybody listening to the pod 
right now, you can go over to Dale's Instagram and view this recap there. That that just like the uh, just like your domain, it is lit. It looks lit right there. Um, that's an ama- that's amazing opening for uh, for those two artists. Um, yeah, man. And getting to put like crypto on the main stage like that. You yeah, had the uh, we had the crypto rich deluxe cover, which you can see right here, which is the NFT that you've seen uh, playing on the background on the big LED screens. So it's like really integrating my brand with the NFTs and everything I do. And by the way, uh, you saw some of the merch on my site, but like it's dope. I wear it all the time. Like this is the type of stuff you get access to. I've been making the merch for two plus years. So it's not like I just put together this merch for the NFT. It's like actually the NFT t-shirt already existed before the NFT because I've been making this for a while. So there's a lot of history behind uh, the Crypto Rich NFT and the album and my music career. Is is it now you just went super deep on all the different utility uh, forms for this NFT. And I would say that is that is on the higher end of utility from artists that I'm seeing, uh, which is really awesome and impressive for, if you were to give advice, like you mentioned earlier, you've played a big part in trying to help onboard artists into the NFT space. How are you making recommendations to them around, you know, utility thoughts? Because not everyone has the ability to put together a play to earn game and, you know, to have some of the features that I think that you included in your project. Yeah, well, one thing to realize is that a lot of this came together naturally. So that game is something that my buddy made for me. He was working on game development a couple of years back. And he was like, hey, man, I think I can make a cool game. And I'm trying to practice my coding. And so I sent him a bunch of stuff and he made up that game. And then I, when my NFTs came out, I said, wow, I have this game that I've kind of been sleeping on. I literally didn't tell my community about it until a few months ago. And I, when, I, when I realized this, I was like, yo, what am I thinking? I've got a, a full game that my community is sleeping on because I haven't even told them because I almost forgot about it. But then I was like, all right, like all at once it came to me. I'm like, OK, this game can be play to earn. Why not just give people a free standard card if they're able to get a high score? So then, boom, I tell everyone in my discord next thing you know i got people playing the game posting screenshots and so it, it creates a lot of engagement around my music and and people learning about my brand that's another thing too it's like if you play through the game a little bit you learn something about my album and and my brand um so overall it's very cool and i would say with utility it's a work in progress okay and so all the utility you see for my album, it comes from like years and months of thought, of, of planning, of uh, thinking about how to build features. So as an artist, you don't have to go crazy just to launch an NFT. You know, launch an NFT, get the funding you need to do creative and do marketing, right? The first uh, mission with your NFT should be to get some funding and use that to do creative like music videos or like uh, new songs and then also marketing. One piece of advice I give all artists, save 50%, that's right, half of your money for marketing. If you have $2,000 to spend on your music, spend 1,000 or less on the music video and 1,000 on the marketing itself. That's like YouTube ads, that's like Spotify, that's like uh, creating NFTs perhaps or doing different promos with the community. Um, There's a lot of things you can experiment with, but what I can say uh, from my years of experience in music is you need to save a big chunk of that for digital marketing. You don't wanna go spend $2,000 on your music video and then put it on YouTube and get 10 views, you know, you want to spend a thousand on your music video, get creative, make it dope, you know, work with some talented artists, put in the time to get something dope and then take that and spend a thousand dollars to promote it and get it on different websites or get some ads run on it. I mean, that's how you build value in the music industry. And so when you get your NFT funding, make sure that you use it to build that value. And so don't focus all on like all this crazy utility if you don't have the platform already to provide that. Instead, focus on appealing to investors or um, uh, collectors, right? And say, say to them, look, by buying this NFT, you're supporting me and you're supporting everything that I'm doing, right? And that's the vision that collectors will support. 
I think. And so if you can actually paint that vision and create a plan, um, you will be able to find people to buy your NFTs. And from there, it's like, okay, if you're doing shows, if you're starting to make merch, it's all going to come naturally. So it's a work in progress and you keep adding more features as you go. And that's how you build value for your community. Yeah. Is what, what is, you know, talking about community here, how, how did you go about starting this community building? And I kind of have a idea that your answer is going to be around the, which seems to be a common theme in your story is just that it's been built over years. Um, and you, you had a community from your music experience, from your hit song and, and it's something that you've been continually adding to, but are there any like lessons learned or common blockers that you're seeing in new artists who don't have that massive community built up? Like what kind of advice can we give to them? And whether it's from your own experience or what, from what you're seeing just trending right now in the web three world, like how are brand new artists that let's say they have quality music. Cause you said that's a prerequisite quality music. Don't have the biggest fan base don't have the biggest online community, especially in the web three world, but they want to start creating it. You know, what's, what does step one look like? Yeah. So I think you're, you, you're exactly right. It's years of work. I started my discord before I really knew about NFTs. I filled it up with independent artists since like 2019. And then it's really exploded in this year, 2021, and maybe the end of last year. And that's been a lot from networking in the space. And so this is actually a good thing for artists that are new and independent artists or artists that are still ca trying to catch their break is that there's not a lot of crossover from, let's say, my Instagram or my traditional listener audience to come into Web3 and get directly into NFTs and Discord and all of that. It's actually very difficult to get people to come from Instagram and, and that aren't there. If they're not already into crypto and NFTs, it's very difficult to onboard them to Web3 right now. And they'll come when they want to, right? They'll come when they're ready. So as an artist, I try to plant the seeds. I try to put some interesting stuff in my captions on Instagram and stuff about crypto and Bitcoin. I mean, that's part of my brand. So I'm very forward about it. Um, but we don't really need to push everyone because if they're not ready to learn about it and they're not ready to put money into NFTs, then they're not going to come over to Web3. So what I would say for new artists and independent artists that don't have a following already is you don't need a following already, right? Tap into the communities on Twitter spaces, on Clubhouse, on Discord. I've gained probably 10,000 followers in the last couple of months on Twitter. I went from like 16, 17K to now almost, almost 25K and it's been growing really fast. I would say 90% of those followers come from within the Twitter community, within the NFT community on Twitter, within spaces by tweeting and engaging with the community. I did not gain 10K Twitter followers by going on Instagram and telling my 140K followers to come to Twitter. That didn't work. I mean, it works It works all right. Maybe I'll get you know four or five people that come over if I post about it. But the way that I've gained thousands of followers on Twitter has been 100% from engaging in the Twitter community. And I would say 99% of my collectors or something, maybe even 100% of my collectors come from Twitter. That's right. Almost none of them are coming from the Instagram with 140K or my Spotify with a million monthly listeners. It's not those people because the people who do want NFTs, what do they do? They tap in on Twitter, right? Because that's just kind of how it works. If you're, if you're deep enough to collect NFTs, you pretty much understand that Twitter is the home base for NFTs. So when you think about this funnel of people coming in, it's like, yeah, maybe I get them interested on Instagram. Uh, maybe I pique their interest with the Crypto Rich album, right? Because let me just talk about this for a second. The mission for the Crypto Rich album. The whole idea with Crypto Rich, the inspiration behind this project was to use my platform to teach people about crypto, to teach people what I had learned about NFTs and financial freedom. So with the Crypto Rich community, we're a collective of individuals focused on enabling financial and creative freedom. 
right? So we are essentially using this community to help artists, to help collectors, to allow listeners and fans to get in on the music and the success. And I feel that music has the potential to reach billions of people. I think that the Crypto Rich album can be global. It might even be popular in places where English isn't the first language just because of this connection to crypto as the OG crypto rap album. So I hope that my music is able to touch people beyond just artists, beyond just collectors, right? It's about the person who hears Crypto Rich one day and maybe they buy some Bitcoin or buy some Ethereum and Crypto Rich was part of the inspiration. Um, so I just think that the, the music has a potential to reach so many people and inspire people around the world. And with Crypto Rich, that's what we're focused on is enabling people to reach financial and creative freedom. I think that if you're still listening by now, you understand that crypto is the path to financial freedom. And when I realized that, I wanted to bring it to a hip hop audience. And so that's that's really the idea here. And slowly but surely, we're building a community around those principles. Mm. Mm. Wow. I love that mission and that vision. And, and that was on my list of questions to bring up to you. So I'm happy that that just got you know looped in by you organically. It's you know, hip hop culture and especially music is really focused on money, right? And like, you know, traditional wealth. And, um, but I would say that a lot of music doesn't really touch on how to acquire that wealth, you know, outside of just becoming the world's biggest rapper. But what you're yeah, doing or, in terms or of stuff, right? It's like drugs and like, you know, whatever, guns and violence and all that stuff. And look, I like rap. Like, come on, I'm a hip hop fan. I'm with all that. And I didn't want to make a nerdy album that people wouldn't be able to relate to where every line's about crypto. I wanted to make something that was like dope. It still sticks to the themes that are popular in hip hop. It's not like every single line is about the blockchain and my new NFT. It's like there's a couple lines in there, tasteful amounts of crypto. It's like rapping about money, dollar bills, wealth, cash, just like rappers do now, except incorporating concepts that I was already living, just like Bitcoin, Ethereum, smart contracts, right? Um, but a lot of the album, you wouldn't even know it's crypto music if you don't know the terminology. Or even if you do know the terminology, you might hear the song and you're like, yo, this is fire, this slaps. And then you hear a crypto line and you're like, yo, did this guy just say something about crypto? And then you find out it's a whole crypto album. So I think uh, the idea to bring people in from the mainstream is really working and the way that I've done it is tasteful. And that's why I think it's passed over 2 million streams and it's the number one crypto album right now is because it's actually crossing over into the mainstream right now as we speak. I mean, I'm really grateful for that. And it's been in a big part thanks to the NFT communities. For sure. Yeah. I mean, having, you know, people getting introduced to crypto through this music is, is awesome. I mean, who knows how that can affect someone to start buying some Bitcoin, you know, getting some Ethereum, going down the rabbit hole of really kind of understanding the Web3 concepts. Because one of the biggest gaps that I see people talking about this a lot online is this education gap, this onboarding gap we have for, for crypto in general. It's a, it's a lot to take in. It's constantly evolving, innovating, and finding some fun, engaging ways to introduce people to that, especially through music, which is something we already all consume. Um, yeah. It's massive. And now, um, I was just going to say on that is like, I think you've seen the content onboarding side. Uh, one thing we haven't seen is my music videos. I have dope music videos, like a bunch of them from Crypto Rich. I do them independently. So that also helps bring people in. But that's the music and content side. On the more technical and education side, I have this pinned tweet on Twitter. Um, and the thread went absolutely viral. It's at almost 700 likes now, and it's helped onboard so many people to the music NFT community. So I actually do a lot of stuff on Twitter, on Discord, which is more technical, like actually walking people through how to get into music NFTs, uh, how to make their own music NFTs. My pinned tweet is basically like a blueprint for those music NFTs. Um, and then I also do three times a week spaces. You can tap in with me Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Friday and learn about music NFTs directly, ask me questions, ask other amazing people in the community, because I'm nothing without all the other awesome people that get on these stages and share information. But when you tap into my room Monday, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern or Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern, you can ask me and a bunch of other talented, experienced people in the music NFT space 
any questions you might have, right? Or anything you want to learn about music NFTs. So I think that's really great. And I would love to have you on as well or some of the Mint Songs team on sometime. Yeah feature and do an interview where we can answer lots of different questions. So um, this is three times a week show. I'm always looking for hosts and sponsors and uh, people that just help me out with the show. So it's just about making a place for people to talk music NFTs. For sure. Yeah. would love to link up with you and uh, potentially connect some other people from the Mint Songs team. We're doing, we're doing spaces too. And I think on the Mint side, and it sounds like on your side too, is we're finding this, there's, there's tons of people, tons of artists who all they want to do is learn more and connect with like-minded individuals. And that's what I think a beautiful thing about the Twitter spaces is, is we're just hopping into a room full of people who all see the vision we see. And, you know, a lot of times when we're chopping it up with our friends in real life and our family and talking plans about how to make it as an artist, it, you start bringing up NFTs and crypto. And I think you get a lot of pushback and, um, what what we really need is the people to, you know, push you forward and inspire you and, and kind of show you this is what worked for me. So, you know, this podcast is, you know, a goal of mine is to help artists through sharing stories like yours and same thing with Twitter spaces. So totally. Yeah. If, you're a, if you're an artist out there, tap into Twitter, check out some of these spaces. Don't be afraid to hop up and ask a question because if you have that question, chances are someone else listening has the same one. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I would love to get on your spaces as well. You know, we could talk about this, tell people to come check out this interview. It's about making content that people can look at and look back to. And then, you know, people are going to watch this video for years to learn something about music NFTs. So I think it's so important what we're doing right now, because we're creating the content for the space. We're basically creating the blueprint. That's why we're pioneering this space and we're teaching everybody the things they're going to need to know. Um, so I love love doing interviews like this where we're just putting out solid information uh, because I think it's going to be really crucial over the next few years that we have lots of content to onboard people to the space. Mm -hmm. Man, something I keep hearing from you is just this long-term vision. And that's really hard for a lot of people to be able to look out multiple years and think, you know, what I'm doing now isn't, you know, I'm planting the seed to let it grow. Now, I want to ask a question around the actual content of the music. So, okay, so Crypto Rich, you're touching on some of these Web3 themes. Do you anticipate that being something that more artists, you know, like in, integrate into their music? Because we're seeing this music explosion is happening right now where artists are onboarding, they're releasing NFTs. But will we see more people adopting, you know, profile picture avatars and making music on behalf of like communities? Today, we just saw... Um, Time Magazine announced that they were going to be making a television series with the uh, Roboto's Avatar project, right? Like, I'm. We see Spotty Wi-Fi being the the crypto punk rapper. Um, I'm interested in your take on. Do you think more artists will really adopt this NFT persona and make music targeted for communities and the broader Web three space, or do you see it more just being tying in like concepts into the lyrics? Yeah, I think both approaches will be popular. I think there's a lot of potential for the community connected things and more novelty ideas. And and certainly we might see some of them be really successful, like Spotty Wi-Fi independently. He's very successful, especially by appealing to the crypto punks community. I mean, that's just pure genius, right? You make something that appeals to the richest community in all of crypto. And I think that was so smart. And it's like same thing when people make something about the bored apes, right? You're appealing to this community that's full of energy because they've had such a killer year. And so I think that's awesome. And some of those novelty uh, music use cases, I think they'll be huge and they'll give some people a platform who didn't have one before. And maybe they'll go on and make even bigger songs and music after. So um, I can't really say, right, because Spotty Wi-Fi's music is cool. Maybe that could be the next big hit. Uh, we'll see what happens. And uh, some of the Bored Ape songs and stuff like that that I've heard, they're cool. Uh, but I guess I would tend to think a lot of that will remain more novelty on the overall. There might be some big winners, but um, that'll be more novelty, more like a sync placement or a commercial. There might be a few that break through that people that get really popular. But I think on the overall, it's going to be like, 
And this is something we've seen for years. Don't get me wrong. Like I heard g Easy rapping about crypto in his songs before. You know, I heard Soldier Boy talking about crypto. Soldier Boy released Bitcoin in 2016, which is a song about Bitcoin. And so I wasn't the first one to talk about crypto and music by no means. I was the first one to put an entire album on the line where all the music was crypto themed and to really tell a crypto story through music. And I consider that different, right? For Soldier Boy, it's like he just put out one single about Bitcoin. Like I created a whole music project about crypto. So I think it's pretty significant that I went out all in and I was the first crypto album, which is more than just like, hey, let's put out a single and capitalize on the hype around Bitcoin. And so um, I've, I've heard, I heard rappers rapping about Bitcoin, talking about crypto for years. We're just going to see it get more common. And now that we've had this major explosion of crypto and NFTs, uh, the idea of making an album about crypto or for crypto or with crypto themes, it's not completely new anymore, right? There's a bunch of people doing it now. There's a bunch of people out there that have done it. But as far as I know, nowhere near the depth of content that I have around the Crypto Rich album. But that's just because I've had years to do it. And I had years of experience in the music industry before that. And I'm on a mission, man. I think Crypto Rich has this huge potential, bigger than Jordan Belfort. I think it'll go pl gold and platinum. That's why I have the gold and platinum trading cards. When it goes gold, if you have a gold trading card, who knows? Maybe I'll raffle off the actual gold plaque and ship it to a fan or ship a couple copies of it to a fan. Same thing for the platinum card. I mean, there's only 10 of those platinum cards. Who knows? Maybe I could send out 10 of the platinum plaques to the actual people that hold the trading cards. So I'm bringing in all this creative utility. Um, I'm making a lot of different items around my album. My goal with the Crypto Rich album, one of my big goals is to reach a billion dollars in market cap around a single album. I think with NFTs, we can create such a huge brand and that can be around a single collection or an album. And so with Crypto Rich, I'm like, why not? Why couldn't Crypto Rich be the album that has a collection worth $1 billion around a single album? So that's my goal. And I've built everything with the long term in mind, just thinking about, OK, I'm going to need thousands of items. You know, if I only have 100 items, we're probably not going to hit a billion market cap. So I'm planning. I'm expanding my collection. I continue to innovate and do airdrops such as the trading cards. And who knows what will be next? But um, there's there's so many ideas, right? Like even wearables for like Decentraland and crypto voxels based on my album. Like basically this merch that you're seeing right here, but in the game. I mean, and those are NFTs. So like the NFT airdrops thing, it's not just like these cool collectibles. It's like items. It's like, who knows, maybe a social token in the future. So um, I'm doing a lot of different things that will bring value to my collection. Yeah. What I'm hearing from you is uh, something that I, you know, a word that I heard from Chris Dixon, you know, a very popular like Web3 investor and and like thought leader talk about composability and how what Web3 allows is us to build on top of assets that are created because everything's open, right? And kind of hearing that same concept being applied to your vision, you know, you, the first NFT you make isn't, it doesn't end there. It's not in this closed system. You can build on top of that and add additional features and experiences, you know, along the way. So, oh, know, yeah, a lot great. of people ask me, a lot of people ask me and, and it's not their fault, but a lot of people will go, hey, are you releasing a new album soon? You ready to drop the new album? And I'm like, yo, I actually do have an album in the vault. I have a lot of good music. But here's the thing. Crypto Rich needs my time, attention, and energy to really grow that. If I just move on to the next project, next collection, I'm going to lose some of the focus of my collectors. And so to me, it's like, I put my heart, soul, time, and energy into this music over years. It took me years to make this album. So I need to put the same amount of effort or more into creating the ultimate NFT collection around it. So yes, I'm going to be dropping new music. I'm going to be airdropping new music to NFT holders. But for right now, it's about music videos. It's about content for the album. It's about expanding my collection. Like I just dropped 1,110 trading cards, like I mentioned. And that was huge for me because it took me from having a couple hundred collectors potential to now I can have a couple thousand or like 1300 collectors. And just since that trading card drop, I went from like 50 or 60 collectors to now almost 250 in five weeks. Right. So this is like five X to my collector base in five weeks or something. Mm, that's awesome. Awesome to hear. So I think we covered a lot. I'd like to ask you some of our final questions that we wrap up every podcast with. Um, 
First one being, you know, your roadmap. You've touched on it a couple of times. So if this is brief, that's okay. But where where are you going? What are you building next? And, um, you know, how can people get involved with that? Yeah, I, I guess I've touched on so many things. So for roadmap, I'll focus on one concept, multi-chain NFTs. Crypto Rich is going to be a multi-chain NFT collection. This means you'll be able to get it on Solana, Cardano, Polygon, uh, different sites and different platforms. So even Mint Songs, right? We've been talking about doing a drop and how we're going to structure it. But I want the Crypto Rich album to be available as on and as many sites and NFT platforms as possible. So I already have a strategy where the trading card are going to be available cross-chain and multi-chain. So you'll be able to get the trading cards on a lot of different chains. And I realize this actually is going to drive a lot of value back to the OpenSea collection and the community as a whole. So it's really interesting. It's going to be this album where you have a full album behind it. You can get the NFTs on any chain, right? There's going to be different prices on different blockchains. It's like selling your products in a different country. You know, Ethereum is kind of like the US, high cost of business, aka gas fees, right? Uh, high potential for growth, one of the biggest in the world. That's that's Ethereum. That's like the US. But when you go to a different blockchain, that's almost like being in a different country. There might be a lower cost of business because there's lower gas fees, right? Um, there might be lower prices that you have to sell your product at in order to be successful. But what I realized is having NFTs available on many different blockchains and many different platforms is the future for crypto rich. Um, and as a part of my community, especially the NFT holders and the VIP collectors, they're going to get airdrops. They're also going to be the first ones who learn about a mint. And that's important, right? Because right now I have like almost 250 collectors. Everybody's making money. Everybody's in profit. My collection's been crushing it on the charts. And so those people are like more willing than ever to follow me over to the new chain and mint. So what's really cool is that when you get a community and you show them that you're smart and dedicated and you know what you're doing in terms of building value around NFTs, they will follow you to the end of time, right? Or until you have a big failure, but let's not hope for that because I, I, I like to think I'm doing things in a calculated and structured way. And I've got five years of experience with crypto economics and blockchain. Um, I've been, like I said, I have a hedge fund advantage blockchain. Uh, so I've been doing this for a long time and I know a lot about building value in crypto communities. Hell yeah. That is, that is what you're describing is building your, you know, 100 true fans, your thousand true fans, and these people will, will want to engage in all the projects you have going forward. So super powerful concept for artists to really learn and unlock. Um, Okay, so now it's time for one, two, web three. So the first question is, who's an influential web three creator or entrepreneur that really inspires you? Um, honestly, I would say Spotty Wi-Fi is a good one. I've learned a lot from his project and talking to him and seeing his approach to music NFTs. And, and he's a homie as well. So I think he's a great person that I'll, I'll shout out. Um, I'm a big fan of what he's doing and I got to meet him in New York. And I think he's a big supporter and fan of my project as well. So I definitely see a future for this whole crypto rap and NFT rap community. Cool. Yeah, Spotty's awesome. We had him on uh, episode two of the pod. Now, favorite NFT. Favorite NFT. That's that's a tough one, man. I really like the Lazy Lions because I got into them at a low price and they've done pretty well for me. And I love that community. That's the OG uh, PFP community that showed me how great these communities are for everything, right? They're for engagement, for growing your own community, for learning how to connect with collectors. So I'll give a shout out to the Lazy Lions. They're great. I'll also give a shout out to the GM Punks by my homie Pixel Lord. Pixel Lord is awesome. I've been collecting his GM Punks for a while, and I recently sold one for a major gain when the collection exploded overnight. So I love to see artists winning. And when I have the NFTs and I'm benefiting from that, that's super awesome. Nice. Always like to see a, a positive flip on an NFT. And in five years, what's the craziest thing we'll be doing in the metaverse or with music NFTs that we're not even thinking about yet? Oh, very interesting. Well, I think most people don't realize that in five years, 
uh, it, it will be like billions of dollars of assets built on top of the current music industry, right? So in five years, it will be more about going and listening to a song and finding an artist that you like and then seeing where their NFTs are because almost every artist and an album and music project could have an NFT connected to it. So I think people are going to like to listen and support artists and music that you can get as an NFT. So it's, it might be like, almost like you look at the top music charts and you're like, wow, whose NFT is doing well now. And uh, if you get in early on some of those hit NFTs or hit songs before they blow up, you're going to win big. Yeah, totally. I'm excited to be there. Cause I know we'll, we'll both be sticking around for that journey. So, um, you know, the earlier you you're into this space, I think the more possibilities and potential you have from an artist, from a collector, an investor, you know, all of them. Well, this was a great discussion, Dill. I appreciate, I mean, you really laid down so many facts about your story, your experience in the NFT space, really, really practical advice for new artists getting in. Um, I encourage everybody listening to this pod, follow Famous Dill on Twitter, join the Twitter spaces we mentioned, whether it's on his, on the Mint songs, you know, any Twitter space going on, so much to learn. And there's a lot of people that are here to help you on your journey. So we will, uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch and appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. Check out my music. The fastest way is to just watch a music video and see what it's all about. My music is always free to listen, and there's a lot of ways to support. You can just stream the audio or watch a music video, but you get the NFT for that deeper connection to my success. So I appreciate everyone, even if you're just tapping into this interview or listening to some music. But if you get the NFT, then you're going to be really on my side, and I'll set up a meeting with you and talk more about different stuff. It's all about that personal connection connection. For sure. All right. Well, we'll catch you all next week. Thanks for listening to the Good Morning Metaverse podcast. Peace out. Good Morning Metaverse, a Web3 and NFT podcast.